sorry about that. I'm trying to. This is awfully loud, so I'm trying to speak as loud as I can. Coach, what's an update on Chris? Obviously, you know he went down and left the game. What what what, what do you have as far as him? As far as his health goes? Uh, he, he went in the back and got some treatment. Everything. Um, is not up in the air. I don't want to give an official update on him until I get more information. I don't have anything right now, but when I talked to him, when he came back out, he said he, he still had his strength and um, he seems to be okay, but we want to wait until tomorrow, you know, after he wakes up and then our medical team can make an assessment. But he, he told me that he felt like he had his strength and, and that's a good thing. Next is Gerald Breguet with Fan Sighted and then Kellen Olson. Uh, Coach, Lakers defense had done a pretty good job on Booker as far as his, his shooting, but tonight he came out and he had one of those big first quarters we've seen from him. Uh, just what was working for him early on in this game to help get you guys off on such a good start? Well, I think our whole team defense helped our offense uh, to be able to get stops and, and the way we played as far as force um, – executing the game plan allowed for our, our offense to play in flow. Uh, we, we didn't call a ton of plays, if any, in the first quarter. We were able to just get out and run. And, um, you know, Book was hitting shots. And <clears throat> when he's got it going from every level, um, he can be hard to stop. Next up is going to be Kellen Olsen with Arizona Sports. Hey, Monty, you guys almost went the entire first half without a turnover. It just felt like that crisp transition from defense to offense was clicking all night. Just your thoughts on the fluidity of your guys' play in that opening first half. Yeah, we had four for the game, and I think we got two early in the third. So, you know, taking care of the ball against the, the number one defense in the league is huge. And, you know, when like I said, when we can get stops and take care of the ball, it gives us a chance to be efficient. But our guard play, um, and, and Jay on the backside does a really good job of transferring the ball uh, and making plays on the second side. So, you know, it's, it's one of those efforts that you want to bottle up. Um, when you play that hard and take care of the ball like that, um, you just want to keep that going as best you can. And we, we just told the guys, like, that kind of effort and that kind of defense travels and now if we can take care of the ball like that, um, we can have success on the floor. Next is Kent Somers with the Arizona Republic and then Anthony Slater. How much of Devin's game was just a, a scorer, a shooter due to break out? Or, or did he actually do something different in that, that first quarter, especially that maybe he wasn't doing the two previous games when, you know, his maybe shot wasn't there like he wanted it to be? It's hard to say. I mean, I, it just looked like we were playing faster um, because we were getting stops. You know, when, you, when you're getting stops and you're playing in transition, and, and Chris, you know, does a really good job of throwing it ahead to book. Um, when you're playing that way with his, his speed, like you don't see a lot of big guards like book that have the speed that he has. And his footwork is, is sound, so he's able to stop on the dime and get to his spots and raise up and knock down shots. But he was getting to the basket. Um, but I, I think everything tonight was predicated on how well we played on the defensive end. It just allowed us to play in transition, and that's when we're at our best. Next is Anthony Slater with The Athletic, followed by Nick King. Yeah, Monty, this has been kind of, you know, a, a lower scoring series, you know, compared to, to some of the others across the league. How big is it uh, when you get, you know, like 14 burst points from campaign uh, when he did and just, you know, a bench performance like that? Yeah, I mean, that's that's been his role for us um, all year long. You know, his ability to, to get out and, and score the ball. He and, he and Chris are two different types of point guards. Chris can score, but Chris tends to settle us down and, and facilitate a bit more. Cam is an attacker. Um, a scorer who can pass. So when he gives us that offensive punch off the bench, you know, it, it, it allows for Book and Mikhail, DA, um, you have to play him and it keeps the defense honest when you have your backup point guard come off the bench and score like that. 
So there's really, there's no letdown when he's scoring like that. And, and that's something that we value. Next is Nick King with Channel 3, Channel 5, and then Gina Mizell. Monty, we've talked plenty about your guys' general playoff and experience. What do you tell these guys about what a closeout game is like in the playoffs? We're going to talk about that tomorrow. Um, we understand who we're playing against. I mean, they're, they're the defending champs. Uh, we're going back to their place. we got to be solid uh, when we go back there. And uh, closeout games are, are really hard. Um, and so our guys understand that. Chris and, and Jay have been in these situations. Uh, we'll lean on their experience, uh, different experiences that I've had, Willie Green, all of our coaches who've been in that, that situation. But we got to just play the same way. You know, we, we've, you know, whether it's a closeout game or game one, our, our job is to go out and, and play with the force and the defense and share the ball and not think about anything else but the next right thing. And, you know, you can't get to the closeout game or the closeout moment until you take care of first things first. And for us, that's just getting ready tomorrow. And um, we'll start preparations for the next game. We, we respect the Lakers, and we know that they're going to come out with a great effort. They, they're the defending champs. And uh, like I said, we respect them tremendously. We have time for three more. Next up is Gina Mizell with Suns.com and then Dwayne Rankin. Hey, Monty, I know we've talked a lot about the home crowd throughout this series, but just with basically a sellout or as sold out as it can be at this point, just what did you think of, of the atmosphere here again tonight? Yeah, it was cool. I mean, it reminded me of those games that I used to come here <laughs> and coach against these guys or play against them early in my career. Um, don't know what the number was. I don't know if it was 15 or 16, but it, it certainly sounded like a packed house tonight. And our guys fed off of that for sure. And when you're playing that hard and defending like that and you got your crowd behind you, it gives you a little bit more juice. And so I, I'm, I'm grateful for the fans that came out tonight. And I can't reiterate, I'm grateful for the safety um, that we have here in this arena. Our fans cheer for us, but they also uh, cheer for us with a great deal of respect. And, and based on what's going on around the league, I don't take that for granted. I'm glad this is a special place to play, but it's also a place where the opposing team knows they can be safe. And, and, and that's a credit to our fans. All right, two questions are Dwayne Rankin and David Chinalato. Your Coach, uh, obviously you guys have played as a, as a unit all year. When you see Chris go down, but knowing that Cam Payton, the way he's been playing in the postseason, how much does that give you confidence that if Chris is limited, that you know that Cam has been playing at a high level? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've talked about it. Um, thankfully, we haven't had to go that route. I don't want to make too many statements about that, but, you know, we're confident in Cam's ability, um, but we're grateful that, you know, Chris seems like he's okay, but we're going to wait until tomorrow to give an official update. Final question is David Cinolato from Italy. Hey coach, congrats for the win. Uh, looking at this game and how you guys have been playing in this series, which is the thing you're most proud of? I mean, there, there's not one thing. I mean, I, I think you're always, proud of any team that plays hard, as hard as we play, you're, you're pretty proud of that. Um, we, we play hard every single night. That's not something I take for granted. Uh, we, we have great buy-in from our players. Uh, the culture we have is something that we're proud of. And, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm just grateful to have a job. I mean, that, that's, that's how I look at it. You know, I'm, I'm one of 30 coaches um, and I, I, I don't take that for granted. So uh, just grateful for what we get to do, grateful for the players that allow us to coach them and, and they play hard uh, for the organization and for the city.